So you can get an example of this on page 444 and 445. But here's our end result that we're going to work toward together for the next few days. Um, I load up the project. We're going to create the Marvel Comics blog. So this, we're going to create this together. Now you may think, well, we don't have all the knowledge to do so yet. We can put this together relatively uh, easily because it's, it's all CSS. All of this works simply from a, from a CSS file. If we don't have the CSS file, the way it looks is like this. Just paragraphs, texts, images, very simple. That's HTML. And then with the CSS, which will be relatively complex, it will then look like that. So that's the power of CSS. Columns. We're going to have these cool tabs that pop up. Dividing lines, rollovers, cool fonts. So I looked at the chapter. I've taught this class a few times. And you know when I look at the chapter in, in chapter 12, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're just pieces of the puzzle. Let's learn something more cool and direct, chapter 15. So I'm not saying I'm going to, I'm not saying for you to skip all of those chapters. You should read those chapters on your own, but we're going to go directly to this to create this on page 444. What's also great about CSS is this. I'm looking at this on a full screen view. If someone were looking at it on a different size screen, let's say something smaller like this. This is like a tablet size. Notice how the design changed. The image is larger. That sidebar has moved. So the sidebar now is at the bottom. And let's say they're on an even smaller screen, like a mobile device. Something tall and thin like this. Notice how the menu up here has changed. It's not horizontal anymore. It's vertical. The graphics change a little bit. The sidebar is at the bottom. So this is a mobile-friendly project. If someone's on looking at this project on a nice big monitor, looks like that. Two columns, top menu. If they're on a tablet or mobile device, it's got to look a little bit different. So we saw that they changed like that. So all of that is through CSS. And it is going to be, it's only going to be about 85 lines of HTML, but then it's going to be 321 lines of CSS. So it's the CSS that is going to make it look nice. So that's what we're going to start with. And we're, we'll take a prob probably a couple of weeks to do it, and then that'll be leading us to the next homework assignment. So instead of going page by page, we'll go to, the, we'll go to something meaningful on page 444. To set ourselves up, you want to get a copy of that blank template. We'll start it with a brand new folder. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop, uh, putting the date, and then get a copy of that template file from the network folder, the starting template. So copy that uh, template file from the HTML folder into a folder with today's date. When you copy it, change your copy of it to be index.html. You haven't really mentioned it in the class, but now I will, and the importance. The first page, it's standard for the first page of a website to be named index.html. It could be named home.html. It could have the date like we've been doing. That's fine. But this is what's standard. When we upload our projects to a web server, this is what the web server will expect it to be called, the first screen of your website. Over the weekend, I emailed everyone with a login and a password. I haven't showed you how to use that yet but I will. Uh, that login and password that I sent you over the weekend will allow you to upload your work to a real web server so that anyone can visit it on their mobile device, on their laptop. We haven't learned that yet, just hold on to that info. If you're saying, what info? 
well, you're not checking your email. You're not checking your Southwestern College email because I sent out info. So anyway, you've got an index file there on the in your folder. Go ahead and right click it to edit with notepad. The title of this will be the Marvel blog. Now, uh, I'm a, one of my hobbies is that I read and collect comic books. I've been doing it since like, I was 10 years old. I still have my very, very first comic that my dad gave me, 1985 or something. So one of my hobbies is comics. And here we're going to make uh, a blog about comics, uh, Marvel. You can do it whatever you want. But you saw the example, the completed example. The completed example is like this. A top logo area, nav bar with buttons to go to different screens. This is the home page. I want to go read about heroes or villains or about. The featured post is Spider-Man, a little bit of text. A little preview, read more. The second article, Black Cat, when she first appeared, a little bit about her, read more. A footer, who's behind the, the website. On the right side, here's other recent articles. I can go jump to these characters, some contact information to contact the author of the page. I can click read more, and then it focuses on the, on the Spider-Man article only. So more text there, just this article completely. If you look at the address, index.html is the home page. I go look at one of the articles, read more, and then it goes to spiderman.html. So the home page is index, and then subpages are named whatever you want for the character. Not not all of these are clickable. There there isn't a, you know a Doctor Doom link. It's just two examples: the home page and Spider-Man, and that's what we're going to create together. Uh, it looks like a really complex project, and it is. But that's why we're going to spend a couple of weeks on it to put it together based on all of the chapters about what's the right CSS code to manipulate an image. What's the CSS code to make a rollover? What's the CSS code to make a bar on the top and a logo above it? It's All of that is through CSS because you saw when I took away the CSS, it then simplifies just to that. And that's just plain old HTML. Heading 1, heading 2, IMG tag, A tag for links. But then there's sidebar, cool graphics, all of that, CSS. So in our project index file, this is the Marvel blog. At the very end, you can put your name. Project is Marvel blog. The date. Um, description, whatever you want. The number one source for all your Marvel Comics info. So we'll focus on the project first that it'll look nice on a desktop. Then we will upgrade it so that it looks nice on a mobile device. All right, so I'm going to remove that heading one for the moment. Go ahead and delete line eight. The way this works is by using, uh, using divs and other other design tags. A div we saw is a generic container. So if we start with div, this is going to be like a wrapper for the whole project. Uh, we can target the div with CSS to 
design it in a certain way in order for us to target that div because we may use more than one div we should then give it an ID or a class we will give this a class of wrapper not wrapper like MC but wrapper like container yes remember that an ID would only be used once uh, per document and a wrapper can be used more than once so we may have an ID with a wrapper for more than one element. So a class would work better when it's more than one element. So this div is going to be a container for the whole project. So making a note, <coughs> making a note here, div for the whole design with a class. Then we're going to divide up the document into sections using these HTML tags of header. section a side <clears throat> inside of the main div. Header will be everything at the top of the document. You saw we had a logo up there, <clears throat> a navigation bar. Section is the main section of the, of the design where we saw the, the, the two preview articles, the Spider-Man article and the Black Cat article. A side will be that sidebar and footer will be at the bottom. So you can make your notes top area for the logo and nav bar section main area for articles a side sidebar on the right side of the design and footer, bottom area for the copyright. <laughs> this project that we will create in the next few class sessions will be a great template for you in the future then to create your own website. If you want to start over and create a website about you know your your portfolio or something this is going to be set up in a way that is going to have you know a main content area a sidebar a top area a bottom area it's going to be responsive mobile friendly it's going to change size so this will be a great starting point for you in the future <clears throat> the easiest thing we can do at the moment let's go down to the footer let's add a a copyright Create a paragraph, we'll write copyright plus the copyright symbol, and then your name, your fictional business, whatever you want. this footer will be at the very end of the document we will just have a copyright at the very top the header 
we'll have our H1. The Marvel Comics blog. And then a nav. There's a tag of nav. We saw that previously when we created a simple nav bar, a simple little horizontal nav bar. Here will be more complex. When you roll your mouse over, a little tab will pop up. It'll have some nice design. So we're creating a nav area. When you get complex to create a real nav bar, it's often done as an unordered list. Bullet points this is very common. So then you've got list items for each of the actual links. We're going to have a home link, heroes link, villains link, about link. So you should copy that to give yourself four links. So there will be four bullet points. They're, they're unordered list, bullet point four items in a bullet point list, in a nav bar, in the header. Through CSS, then, we will style this to look nice. So we'll have home as our first link, heroes, villains, and then about, about the site. Save it and run it. It looks very far from what, from what our ending point will be. But here's what we've got so far. Header, some bullet points, which will be links. Footer, which will be at the bottom of the screen. This is it so far. Those bullet points are going to be <coughs> links. Those bullet points are going to be links, so we'll add links. Question? No. So we'll add bullet point. Uh, we'll add links to those bullet points. Under uh, home, you want to wrap the a tag around that. Each of these will have the a tag. A tag, remember, is made up of an href, and for the moment, we'll set the href to a pound symbol, like an empty link, a dummy link, a, a, a null link. It doesn't go anywhere yet. So add that a tag to each of those bullet points. Make sure you close the a tag for each of them. somewhere for the moment it's just a null link. The dummy link doesn't go anywhere but I want it to look like a link. Make a note here. Nav bar. Collection of links styled in CSS. cool horizontal nav bar I showed earlier. That's what CSS can do. It'll make them horizontal with graphics and shadows and all of that and it'll look like a tab. But for the moment it looks like a simple bullet point list. 
section. Let's add a class to this. And again, the point of the classes and the IDs is to be able to target specific ones through CSS. I can write a CSS, uh, a CSS rule of section and, and style the section. But I'm going to have more than one section, a section for the blog, and a section for the sidebar, and a section for whatever. So with a class or ID name, I can target it. I can select it via CSS. On screen in this section, we'll have an H2 featured posts. The latest articles, posts, will be featured in this section, the blog section. Basically, we have a left side of the design and a right side of the design. The left side is the articles, the right side is that sidebar. This is another example where I want to style the design of that text, h2. I'm going to use h2 more than once. So another class will be very helpful here. h2 top. We'll create, a, we'll create some CSS that will target anything that is classed as h2 top, and it will change how I define it. This section is going to be made up of previews of articles. There's the Spider-Man article, the Black Cat article, etc. We have a tag called article exactly for this purpose. make a note an article is a group article for grouping content together in the preview that I showed what were the things that were grouped together for spider-man let me pull it up again picture and description, picture and description. yep So we have the picture, the name of the character, the first appearance, the description, that um, that's all a group. So that's the point of this uh, article. It's going to be for us to group it all together and then also to style it. First, uh, we've got a, an image. We've got a picture of the character. Remember when we learned using figure and fig caption to group together a picture and its text? So we will do the same thing here. We will use a figure, which will have an image and a fig caption. article is going to be made up of different pieces. An article is going to have a figure and then a description. The figure is the image. It has its little caption below the picture. The next block after figure. After figure, um, the text that appears this text here, the name of the character plus the first appearance, those are also headings, heading 3 and heading 4. So we, we didn't talk about it in class, but in the book there was something known as an H group, a heading group. The purpose of this tag is to group together headings.
So we're seeing now as we get more complex HTML. Again, HTML, the, the purpose of it is structure and content. The structure of my project is grouped together. The content of my project is grouped together in a certain way with structure, HTML. The design of it is all up to CSS. That's why we're going to have 300 lines of CSS and only about 90 lines of HTML. We've got a tag for the right task. Here's a tag for an article. It's task. A figure, it has a task. In each group, it has a task. Um. So then we've got uh, H3. This will be the name of the character. In this case, we'll we'll uh, we'll make we'll make it for Spider-Man first, and then H4. The first appearance of the character. So first appearance. Fantasy number 15, all the way back in 1962. Was that off the top of your head? It usually is, but I have notes today. So if we if we view this in the browser at the moment, again visually it's not going to be that nice, but we're starting to put the structure together. You can kind of get the idea of what it is, what it is even without any design. We have speed feature posts, here's this character, the next character, etc. Well, regarding images. Nothing shows up in the in the figure area. We we never specified an image. I've got some images that I'll uh, that I'll give you. These are going to be images online. So let's back up to line 27 where we've got our image tag and we will fill this in. How do you complete an image tag? It needs an attribute of source. Source. S R C. Href is for tags but SRC is for images. This is, uh, this is the, the link right here. It's kind of a long one, but it will, it will work. It should work because it's not going to be an image in your folder. It's an image on my server on the internet. So we type the HTTPS part to say this is an image on the internet. It's going to be at vmcink.files.wordpress.com slash. So here we're connecting to a server on the internet, my WordPress account, my account there, my files. So we're connecting to a place online for pictures. Make a note. You can go to WordPress.com and create a free account and upload as many pictures as you want, basically. And this is where I've uploaded my pictures. So that my picture, I don't have to include it in my project folder. I've put it on my server online. I can access it from any, from any computer. 2016 slash 10 slash spiderman.j.png. So there's the picture. It's up on a server in a specific folder, subfolder. Spider-Man ping inside the 10 folder, 2016 folder on this server on the internet. This image, we're going to grab it from the internet to show it in our project. Go ahead and save it and run it. You should at least see the picture shows up. If it doesn't show up, check your spelling. If you get a little broken icon, check the spelling. It has to be exact. That's, that's the path to the picture. Okay. 
let's add an alt attribute, alt text. Just say Spider-Man. Remind me, what is the alt text attribute about? You hover over the picture with your mouse. Actually, that one is the title attribute. When you have a screen reader or something, that tells you what it describes. Yes, this is a description for screen readers uh, of what the picture is. So let's, let's do both. Let's add the alt text and the title text. Title is the one that will pop up. I'm just going to write the same thing. It's very common to have alt and title the same thing. But you can change it. Alt can say one thing for people with a screen reader, and title can say something else when you hover your mouse over it. Okay, fig caption, this is going to be the text that appears below the image. We'll keep it simple, we'll say the caption of that figure will just be the amazing Spider-Man. And when you see the result, there's the figure caption. This is the project so far. There's the top area, there's those links, there's the graphic, footer, a little bit of text, and so forth. So it's coming along. This is the structure that we're dealing with at the moment. We'll get to the design, of course. Um, right below our heading group, we will create a little uh, area for the, the main description of the character. Now, notice we're still all completely inside the article. The figure, the heading group, and now the description, which will just be a plain P tag, a plain paragraph. Here, uh, you can write whatever you know about Spider-Man. I'm just going to write a little bit of his origin here. Bitten by a radioactive spider. Shy teenager Peter Parker. And obviously, if I press Enter, it will not create a new line. But I'm going to press Enter so you can see it. Imagine this is one long line. I do not want a break there. I just I just need to press enter for you to see it. So this will all be one long line. Gain speed proportional, proportional speed and strength of an arachnid. What I do want, though, after that little bit of description text, I then do want a break. Still in the same paragraph. After that sentence, I want a break so that I can have read more. If a person wants to read more about that character, there will be a link here to read more. So a link. This would go over to spiderman.html file, which doesn't exist yet, which will be a broken link, and it's OK for the moment. We wrote the copyright symbol with a special code, right? It was the ampersand copy semicolon that creates the copyright symbol we can create a variety of other symbols like arrows 
uh, I believe we we didn't we take a moment to go to a website to see examples of a bunch of characters we can create with a special code. Here's one of them: ampersand lowercase r capital A R R semicolon R R. This will create a right arrow. This will create a symbol of an arrow pointing to the right. Interested, you can go to the web and search for HTML arrow codes. And there will be plenty of websites out there that will tell you all of the codes for all of these different arrows. So you would just copy the copy the code. Some of them have a simple name and some of them have a weird number. Like I looked one up, and here's one. Ampersand pound eight six two one creates an arrow that looks drunk. I'm going to keep it with that right arrow. So this article is all about this character. We've got an image for the character, we've got a heading group, and a little paragraph of description. All of this is one unit. One more thing here. I want to make the name of the comic of the first appearance italicized. What's our italicization tag? M, E M for emphasis. So let's emphasize the name of the comic. It's pretty common when you write like term papers and such. Don't you have to italicize the name of the book or publication? So we will emphasize the name of the comic. So all of this article is one unit of information for one character. Copy, copy your article from minus from 25 to 39. Copy that and paste it afterwards so that we can do the same thing for one more character, the black cat. So copy everything that's the article tag to the ending of the article tag. Zoom out for you to see that. I have an exact copy of article, and I pasted it. So I've got two Spider-Man articles now. All I need to do now is change a couple of things, the picture and the text. I've got the structure. This is the structure of an article, same article, but with different details. So let's say this is the second article. First, we'll change the, the character. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a list of those characters in the network folder. Let me do that. I have a, a list of all of these characters that I have that you could use in the network folder and the CIS152 folder if you want to look in there. But basically, I've got all of these characters the, these are all exactly the same, but it, it's Spider-Man, Daredevil, Thing, etc. If I want to do Black Cat, so it will use the Black Cat uh, graphic. But I've got all of these other ones, Venom, Magneto, etc. 
that's in the network folder. Uh, I put a, a file in there called characters.html. But for the moment, line 43, black cat, title, I mean, uh, yeah, title and alt, black cat, fig caption, the black cat, right? We're going to fill in some details about this character. Fig caption, the black cat. H3, well, in the heading now we're dealing with black cat. First appearance. I don't have this one memorized. Uh, this one was in Amazing Spider Man number 194. You can hear, of course, write anything you want. If you choose one of the other characters, Venom or Dr. Doom or whatever, you can write whatever you want. Content-wise, this doesn't really matter. Our big focus is the, the structure of HTML and then design via CSS. For the for the description in the P, you can say Felicia Hardy is an accomplished cat burglar and uses her augmented costume to steal the world's finest treasures. And beguile Spider-Man. The link, of course, would make sense here. Read more about her on our page, blackcat.html. A little note here. We've probably mentioned it, but I'll mention it. File name tips. No spaces. No capitals. Spaces can cause a broken link. If this file was called black cat space, it might break the web browser might not actually take the person to the right page because there's a space. It's best to avoid spaces in file names and capitals because if you called it capital B for black cat, the file, and you didn't write a capital B there, it might be a broken link also. The web browser might not uh, properly link it because technically capital B and lowercase b are different. The computer will see it as different letters. To avoid that, no spaces, no capitals on your links for file names. If you, if you don't do those, you will avoid broken links. If you run this one article, Spider Man, second article, Black Cat. So, so 
So check that your code works how you're expecting it. This is what we have so far. And eventually, of course, we're going to end up with this nice design and everything. But we'll get there in a moment. This is our project here. Uh, let's do the next part of it. Notice how in the completed project, we're going to have the, the left side with the two articles, and then a right side, a right sidebar. Let's work on the sidebar. Uh, that is going to be our next piece of the code, a side. Everything on that sidebar is there. It is a side with an A, not side. It's aside. When these tags were being invented, th this is how they did it. You know, we're gonna you're gonna have a section in your website, so a section tag. You're gonna have perhaps an article on your website, so an article tag. You're gonna have a nav bar, so we'll call it nav. You're gonna have sidebar stuff, so we'll call it aside. That comes from the idea of like a newspaper, where you're reading a newspaper or some other magazine, and you have something that's off to the side. Technically, that's known as an aside. So the aside tag we use for a sidebar. In the sidebar, this will also have sections. So you can reuse sections. We had section for the main blog. But these are going to be sections in the aside. H2 recent posts a tag href to nowhere for the moment and we'll just list some recent articles at the moment do not have a break don't put a break that's fine via the CSS we can break it up into individual lines instead of having to write the break tag and then another section in that sidebar this is also heading to Contact. A little bit of contact information here. Create a paragraph. And then an address. Remember, address was one of the requirements for the previous assignment. So guess what we'll put inside of the address tag? Address information. So the right tag for the right task. Here you can make it up. I was trying to be funny over here in my example. Just some uh, quick contact information inside of an address, in a paragraph, in a section, 
in the sidebar. Seeing the results in the browser, the sidebar is not on the side yet, even if, you're, if you've got your screen maximized. Just because you put it into the sidebar in the, in the aside doesn't mean it will appear on the side. That's where the CSS will come in. And then these links are all horizontal. I want them on their own line. Don't do a break on them yet. We will use CSS to put them onto their own line. And remember also the example is that it's going to look like this. It's going to be divided into their own lines. And then when you hover over, a cool color will appear. That's CSS also. The nav bar at the top, again, looks super plain. It's bullet points. It will eventually look horizontal with dividers. And then when you hover over, you get these little tabs that pop up. We'll change fonts. That's all coming via CSS. So here's the project so far. And that's basically the end of the HTML. We ended up with 91 lines of code or so. You may have an extra space here or there. That's fine. I got 91 lines. Um, actually, I want exactly 90 lines. So I'll remove that one. Doesn't matter. I've got 90 lines, whatever number of lines you have. But uh, this is the HTML portion, and that's, that's all we need so far for the HTML. We've got the structure, we've got some content. That's a variation of what's on page 447 and 48. So what we just did together, if you want to review it, it's, it's on page 447 and 448. I changed it a little bit, but that's the example. On page 445 and 446, there's a bunch of CSS that will then make this look nice. So if we are done with that part, we'll start working on the CSS portion of things. CSS, as we said previously, can be uh, embedded or it can be external. We will we'll do the same as last time. We will create an external CSS file. We will keep all of our CSS in its own file. Let's save your current file and then go to File New. File Menu New and then File Save As. Make sure you save it in the same folder as your current project. Save as type is CSS, and we'll call this my style.css. If you have multiple CSS, multiple one pages, would it be better to name the CSS sheet after the web page that you're? When you say web page, do you mean like everything of the web page? Or do you mean website? Because web page is one file and website is the whole thing. So I guess it depends on what you're using the CSS for. You can yeah, 
the, the short answer is you can call these thing these files anything you want that makes sense to you. This might be maybe too much of a basic name, I agree. So maybe this should be called, you know, marvelstyle.css. That'd be fine, because this is the Marvel project. That's perfectly fine. Anything that we want to call this, as long as we link it properly in the next step, then it'll work just fine. So my style.css, go ahead and save that. And then in the index file, we need to go back to the index file and link this CSS file to it. Back to the index file, and we need to go to the very top. In the head. Yep, we have. We don't have too much in the head, so we'll say uh, <coughs> there's the meta tag, there's the title. Let's add link, like we did previously. This is going to be a link to the CSS file. First, we give the attribute rel style sheet. What we're about to link to is a style sheet. href, the name of your file. So again, my style.css does not have capital letters, does not have spaces, and when I link to it via the href, I write the same thing. Just to confirm that this is set up properly, here's your challenge before I do it. Go to your CSS file and make the background color of the whole thing yellow or green or whatever. So see if you remember what we did yesterday. Create a rule very, very easily to change the background color of everything to green. You'll, make, you'll, you'll understand that it works if you can get that working. So try that, then I'll do it. See if you remember. Make everything green in the CSS file. The background color. So just trying to see if you've got it right, if, if you've linked to your CSS file properly and you've written the right CSS, you should have a background color of some color besides white. What you should have done was, in the CSS file, simply the body tag, the selector of body, with a property of background color and a value of green. This is one of the fastest ways to simply change the background color of everything. Body. How do you have it on split screen? When you right click a tab, then you can select move to other view and you can have it split screen. some kind of background color in your HTML file. If you didn't, check your spelling of link or check that you wrote this properly. All right, so what we're going to do is write a lot of HTML, I mean a lot of CSS, but it's only going to be about 321 lines because these things can be really complex. And again, we'll take a couple of days on this. And when we get to this part, the CSS is going to be harder than the HTML. But it's everything that's between chapters 10 and 15. So tomorrow during the lab time, if you come in, I would recommend practicing this. Check out those chapters that we're not doing together. 
over the weekend, look at those chapters. And what we're doing again is on page 445. Slightly different, but it's on 445. And again, if you're having any trouble at any point, if it's not working, working right, let me know right away. Or ask, ask a neighbor, but let me know right away because CSS is the second hardest one of these. And something builds on top of something. We saw on our intro yesterday that you have to deal with specificity and is it a class, is it an ID, and inheritance, and why is the color still yellow even though I wrote red. So CSS is a lot harder. And then of course JavaScript is the hardest one. So I don't want you to fall behind and something doesn't work because then we build on top of things. One code builds on top of another code and if the first code didn't work, the next code won't work in CSS. So we're going to use a color here called light slate gray. Whatever color you had, we're going to use light slate gray. One word, no capitals or spaces. Then we're going to add a background image. So we have background color, background image. The way we're the reason we're doing this is we're going to put a background color first. And then we're going to load an image. If the image doesn't load, maybe the server is down. I've still set a basic color instead of just a plain white color. So the order of this matters, of course, just in case this image that we're about to connect to, if it's, if it's not working, we at least have a color. So the background image we're going to connect to a URL, a web address. So the syntax is very specific. URL, open close parentheses, open close quotes. And in between, we're going to have a link to one of those images that I have online. You could save yourself a little bit of typing by copying the link that we had to Spider-Man. But instead of linking to the Spider-Man file, it links to a file called galaxy.jpg. So I'm going to copy from the HTML file the link to Spider-Man, but not Spider-Man, paste it, and then it'll be galaxy.jpg at the end. Now that we're working with more than one file, remember, you, want, you might want to just save all and then run your index. Don't run the CSS or it'll just show you code. Run the index. It loaded up uh, a, plain old a plain old color first, then it'll load up the graphic on top of it, galaxy.jpg.jpg. So my result. is that the galaxy graphic. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. I should I should read my notes. I have them for a reason. Sorry about that. Okay, 2017-01 galaxy. The rest is the same. 2017-01-01 galaxy. So I get a galaxy in the background. Some of the text I can no longer read because now we've got black text on a black background. We'll fix that, of course. But at the very least, you should have this galaxy. Make sure you change this. I forgot to change it. It's 2017-01 galaxy. Have you ever seen a website where there's a cool background image, and then you scroll, and the background image stays in place, but the stuff on top of it scrolls. The default here is that I'm scrolling my screen, the stuff on top of the galaxy scrolls, and the galaxy scrolls. 
That's the default. The background also moves. We can add some CSS to fix the, the galaxy picture in place. We can keep it in place. Background-attachment fixed. So if you run it now, the galaxy will stay in place. And you scroll, and all the pictures will move on top, but not the, the galaxy. scroll, the galaxy stays in place. That is somewhere on, I don't know, chapter 13 or something. Again, this is just a culmination of those chapters that you should read on your own. This is a culmination of those chapters little by little to building up to this chapter 15. We have also the ability to do background dash position. Right now the picture is positioned at the top left corner. I want to instead do center. Center the picture. This is optional. This is just for aesthetics and design. Maybe you don't want to really position it. It's fine where it is. I kind of like the way it looks based on this picture and when I was setting up the project, I like to set it I like setting it to center. Uh, here's the difference. If, if, uh, if you're looking at it here with the default, notice how like the main part of the Milky Way galaxy, I guess, is right there. But by setting the center value, it moved it. So now the picture is centered on the person's screen. When they're on a smaller size, same thing. There's the, the ridge of the galaxy in a different spot. So the picture will automatically be centered based on the person's size of their screen. And then when they scroll, that will always be visible because we fixed it. So we should write some notes. Remember, notes inside of uh, CSS look like this. Set a basic color and then a, an image. fix the background image so it doesn't scroll away. Center the background image. This background position could actually be changed a little bit. We can put values here. This is centering it exactly where we want, um, in the center of the design, whatever values that is. If we want, we can do this. Um, we can put values. If I put uh, 200px space 500px, what will happen here is it will push the image 200 pixels to the right and 500 pixels down. Positive values. We'll move the image to the right. We'll move the image down. Negative values. We'll move the image to the left. Negative value. We'll move it up. So we can set exact values of where the image would be by setting pixels. I don't. I don't want to do it that way. I just put center, and it will let the web browser put it exactly where it should be. Notice when I did 200, 500. Now I moved it around, and I'm seeing the edge of where that picture ends and the picture continues. You know, the picture tiles. I moved it over some amount. I moved it over 200 pixels to the right. I moved it 500 down. You're starting to see the edges of the picture. When I had it set to um, center, I don't, I don't see the, the seams. When we had no value, also you don't see the seams, but it wasn't quite aligned how I wanted. Yes. 
Okay, let me just uh, put this back. I'm going to leave it on center. I like I liked it on center. <sighs> Then we have an image, fixing it, centering it. Let's add a new property. Now, all of this is being added to the body selector. We've said to the image, uh, to the body of the file, let's affect it this way. We've selected the body tag and we've changed it with these variety of properties and values. Let's add a margin property. Margin is how much space around the edges of the screen. Just to make it obvious, if you write 100px, this will put 100 pixels of space all the way around the design. It's way too much, but I just want to show you margin is going to create some amount of space on the edges of the design. There's 100. 100 pixels on all four sides. Remember we talked about the box model, that everything is inside of a box. The body is a box. Margin creates some space around the edges. My monitor is different from yours. When I'm maximized, even my maximized screen looks different than yours. So you might not see it that obviously, but when I resize my screen a little bit like this and that, it, you, you get the idea. So there's 100 pixels all the way around on all four sides. We have the ability to specify the four sides of the invisible box. Try this, 100 space 25, space 5, space 1. These are the four sides of the box. Top, right, bottom, left, in that order. So making notes, setting the margin. of the four sides of the box, of the body box. In the order, top, right, bottom, left. Isn't that clockwise? You start at the top, right at the top of the screen up here, top, right, bottom, left. Clockwise. Give me 100 pixels of margin of space at the top, 25 at the right, 5 at the bottom, 1 at the left. That's what we get here. 100 at the top. On the right side, you, you're not really going to see it unless you really shrink your your uh, your your screen. At the bottom, you notice it very little. And then on the left, you definitely notice it. There's only one pixel, one little space on the left, around all the left, one pixel. I specified all four sides. If you do it like this, Specifying two, this will give you at the top and the bottom the same amount, and then the right and the left the same amount. 
top right, bottom left. Doing it this shorthand, top and bottom, right and left. So top and bottom, right and left. And we did it the first time with only one value. That one value automatically gets added to all four sides. So this is very common to do once we start to figure out spacing of stuff. Do I want to specify all four sides of the box at once? Just put one value. Do I want to specify the same at the top and bottom and left and right? Two values. Do I want to specify a different size for each of the four sides? Then you should specify all four sides. Yes? How do you specify with percent? Same sort of thing. You you put in you put a value and then you just write the percent symbol. So how like hundred pixels is how much percent? Uh, it doesn't exactly relate. A hundred pixels doesn't relate with a percent because a percent is based on the size of the screen. So if I've got 75% margin, that might look great on my nice big monitor. But 75% margin might be huge on a mobile device. And vice versa with pixels. 100 pixels might look really nice on my mobile device because it's small. But 100 pixels might be really big or small on a, on a big monitor. So this is always our challenge. What's the right value to put? Because we have to deal with people looking at our site on a big monitor, small monitor, tablet, device. So oftentimes, that's why we have to experiment with different size, different size browsers and screens. Uh, so there's no short answer about what's the right way to do it. Right now, we're, we're going to do it. Uh, we're usually going to use percentages because they grow and they shrink appropriately. So all of this is just to kind of give you information. Uh, if you wrote what I wrote here, right, the last margin will take over. Uh, the last one will take over. But what I want to do is I only want to leave one of them active. So I'm going to leave these as a comment. This is just for your information. You can further write, this specifies all four sides. This specifies top, bottom, right, left. This specifies them at once. You can say all at once, top, bottom, then right, left. Specify each one. Now be careful here. This is all a comment. This is why I can write text over here because my comment I started it here and I ended it here so make sure this is commented or you'll get errors because this text here is not valid CSS so make sure all of that is a comment and then finally after the comment I will write the real one that I want which is margin zero had us writing some real values just to show you that that's what the margin attribute does and that we have the ability to target different sides. Sides. I wrote one value, so what's happening? All of them are going to be zero. All, of, all four sides will be zero, yes. I'm setting it to zero. No pixels, no percentage, whatever. Zero. Meaning give me no amount of space around the edges because I'm going to do some other CSS stuff a little bit later. You may see a little bit of space up there. That's other things we'll talk about. But I don't want any space around the edges. There is some inherited space that is still there. Again, I thought I said zero on all four sides. But because of other elements that have some inherited value, I still see some space, especially at the top. This is, again, the complexity of CSS. This is not wrong. It's just that. There's a heading one up there. That heading one itself has some margin, has some space. So we need to figure out then how to change it or nullify it or something. So this is correct so far. There will be some space at the top and the bottom, but there shouldn't be any at the left and the right. Thank you. 
the text is getting hard to read, people love to put a background image. The problem is that your text on top of it is often going to be hard to read. This dark text is on a dark background, hard to read. But when the text, when that dark text is over a lighter part of the, the design, it is easier to read. Notice here now, dark on light, that's easier to read. So here's the challenge. What's a good graphic to put in the background so that I can actually read my text? Uh, one way to help us uh, fix that is, well, let's set, our, let's set our color of the text. I want to set this to dim gray, because then we're going to add other elements to, for it to be even more readable. Font-family. This is where we can start to specify our fonts. Actually, for the moment, um, for the for the moment, just put color white. We will use dim gray in a moment, but just so that we can see it for the moment, uh, put white. Now, obviously, where the color now is white on dark, it's readable. But now, where it's light on light, it's not readable. So there's always that contrast. For the moment, just set it white so that we can play with font for a moment. There's a whole chapter that goes into a lot of detail about fonts, but just for the moment, font family. Let's change this to Chiller, capital C. So now we have this scary font, perfect for Halloween. So we had a default font that appeared, and now I'm saying let's use the font of Chiller. And you should see that it kind of looks scratchy and and weird. This will only work on Windows because Windows has this font. The Chiller font doesn't exist on the Mac or Linux. So here's the problem. Read the chapter on, on fonts because it'll tell you there. The problem with setting fonts is that the person needs that font on their computer for it to work. So if I specify a font I really like, it works on my computer because I have that font on my computer. But if you don't have that font on your computer, it doesn't work. That chapter goes on to tell you what are the best ways to make sure your font works for every computer. I don't want to get into it at the moment, but read that chapter. And what we'll do here is we'll set some fonts that are more common. Georgia is a font that is common to people. Comma, times, comma, times New Roman in quotes, comma, serif. Well, if we had chosen to use only one font, Chiller, and the, and the person doesn't have it on their computer, we don't know what it will look like on their computer or mobile device. So doing it this way, we're specifying, we're saying, OK, try to use the Georgia font. If your computer doesn't have it, OK, try Times. If their computer doesn't have it, OK, try Times New Roman. Okay, if their computer doesn't have it, try Serif, which is just a completely generic font. So you could put Georgia at the front, I mean, Chiller at the front, right? Yeah. So if we put Chiller first, have the person try to use Chiller. They don't have it? OK, second choice, Georgia. If they don't have it, third choice, Times. And I have there up to my final choice. Now, Chiller I just use as an example of an obvious font. But I'm going to do it this way. And for the note here, this is a font family. Set a first choice, second choice, etc. of font of possible fonts.
if you're interested, page 273 gives you all of the details. See page 273. Page 273 gives you all the details of how this concept works. A little bit later, once we get more, more into this, we will have a way to specify any font. I don't want to get into it just yet. So right now we're using some basic fonts. They're not that nice. They look like every other basic font. But later we will use some nice looking fonts using Google Fonts. Because just like we connected to a picture on the internet, we can connect to a font on the internet. That way the person doesn't need to have the font on their computer. It's a little more complex than I want to do it at the moment, so we'll get back to it. But it is in the book. We've set a font family. We should set a size for these fonts. Font-size. And we'll use the unit of 1M. Now when you type, uh, when you use fonts in Microsoft Word, what units of fonts are you using, do you know? You know, it says 12 something. What's the unit? Hmm? Pixels. No, it doesn't use pixels, but it is another P. Have you seen it's got 12 PT? Those are points. In Word, it uses the unit of points. We have here, we could do one point. We could do 12 point, like Word. Right in Word, we have these different sizes that we can choose. Well, what I want to do is we have the value of M, which is sort of like percentage. 1M is sort of like 100%. 1M. So 2M is like 200%. Notice how the text is a lot larger. This is very common to see, but also, you know, 100%. 125 percent so we don't want to use values that are fixed points are fixed 12 points is 12 points we can also use inches and centimeters and millimeters here if we want we can do one in for one inch now my fonts are one inch that doesn't look like one inch to me it's bigger than my hand So values of like real world units, we can use them, but we shouldn't. They don't make sense in, in a web project. We should use values that scale or change like 100% or like 1.5M, 1.5. So the M is based on the letter M of your font. So whatever the letter M on Georgia looks like, this is one and a half times larger than that. This is a common way to set font sizes. Based on the font, change the size. So font units. Avoid inch, centimeter, millimeter use M or percent. Exactly. It would be inherited, but we oftentimes regarding CSS, we shouldn't avoid we shouldn't assume what it will look like. We there are defaults, so we as often as possible want to set our own values so that we know what it should look like. There is an automatic amount of margin I don't care what it is. I'm setting it to zero so that I can redefine it exactly how I want later. There's an automatic font size, probably one. 
I don't care. I want to set it myself so that I can define it better later. I'm going to do a 1.1, slightly larger than the default size, 10% larger than the default size. And then uh, line height. This is the amount of space between each line. There's the first line of a sentence and the next line. There's a line height in between. I want to set this to one and a half M's. So the text is a little larger. And there's a little bit more space between each line. That top, uh, the top text up there, that's a heading which we will control. But you can check what's going on with the paragraphs. We'll do one final thing and then we'll wrap up or at the end of the day one final thing here is this is affecting the background of everything uh, let's set our color back to uh, dim gray because what I want to do is create one more rule and then we'll wrap up we're affecting the body so everything is going to get these rules this is going to cascade down to everything but we've got a div that we've used to separate the content from the body. What was that div called? I think I heard someone's, yes, wrapper. Thank you. We've got wrapper as the div that separates everything from the body. So let's write a CSS rule dot wrapper. Anywhere where there is a class of wrapper, let's do the following. Let's set a width of the wrapper to 960 pixels. Let's set a margin. Give me some space of 1m space auto. I'll explain auto in a moment. Let's add a border to that div. 2 pixels space solid space black. And finally, a background color of white. maximize in a moment. But what's happening now is put, put a background color of white in the div. So now we get white behind this. But we've still got the galaxy behind that because the galaxy is attached to the body. There's a, an amount of space of 1m at the top and the bottom. Auto is an automatic amount to keep the, the white part centered. The border is kind of obvious. Put two pixels all around the four sides. Solid design, black color. Background color. <coughs> so as you, you can play with these things. You can say, give me a border of 12 and make it red. And give it to me as a dotted line. So now I've got a dotted line, red. 12 pixel sized. Give me more space at the top and bottom. Two M's, five M's. You'll have more space at the top and bottom. You should leave auto because what that does is it automatically puts an amount on the left and the right so that that then gets centered. Put this back to real values. We've got a little black border all the way around the white background color that will stay centered as best as possible if you resize your screen that's what the auto is doing the width of that div is 960 even though I said percentages are better we will come back to that next time but here we're starting to set up our design we're still away away from it but this is what we have so far this is what we're going to get eventually. Right? Separation, background image, border. That's what that is so far. 
We'll wrap up the lecture at this point, have a little lab time if you need it. I'm going to put my code so far in the network folder if you want it and on Blackboard. When we come back next Monday, we will uh, continue to work on this. Tomorrow is a lab day. If you want to continue to work here, I'll be here. And uh, I'm working on still the grading and such. So that's it for the moment, and I'll see you next time.